Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Bain at Moonlight Beach Dental, and I want to do a quick video on one of the topics I'm really passionate about, which is the effect diet can have on the teeth, bones, and actually facial growth in children. I know everyone knows that universally sugar is bad for our teeth, but what people don't realize is it's actually the introduction of the Industrial Revolution, the massive processing of food, and how generation by generation, foods have gotten softer and softer over time, and how those sticky foods can create not only much higher incidences of tartar and decay than we've ever seen previously, but also that now there's not enough room in the jaws for the wisdom teeth, and most children now are being born with crowding of even their baby teeth. And a lot of this stems from not only vitamin deficiencies, and it's also from our lack of chewing food. If you think about it, our modern day diet, especially for kids, is food purees and pouches, mac and cheese, fish sticks, chicken McNuggets, dehydrated uh, instant oatmeals. If you think about, about it, even a hamburger, is ground meat. None of these foods were around even 200 years ago. So Dr. Price, William Price, did a series of, of studies on skulls um, more than 100 years ago that really showed that culturally, we as humans are not inclined to get decay, gum disease, or even crowding of the arches. He even studied one tribe in the early 1920s that had been completely untouched by civilization, I mean literally wearing loincloths and with a spear in the air, completely untouched. And in one generation of being exposed to our modern day diet, their children had decay, more crowding, and in two generations they had severe decay, crowding, and gum disease. They were in a population that had never had it prior. So at that point, that really points out and highlights that genetics weren't even the issue. It was the epigenetics or the influence of some of these factors that could create the slew of issues. So I really wanted to boil it down, and if you want to learn more, I really highly encourage you to read a couple books. The Dental Diet by Dr. Stephen Lynn is a really simple approach to understanding foods and the foods we can integrate, and also some exercises in there to help the jaws develop better and the airway to develop better, should you be interested in that. The other one is The Dirt Cure, and it's written by a pediatric neurologist, and she talks about how so many of these foods in our modern day diet also can cause a slew of additional issues, whether it be autoimmune or autism or ADHD. So I encourage you to read either one of those if you wanna learn more. But really it boils down to a couple basic things. We're now lacking vitamin A, vitamin D, and vitamin K2. Those are the main things that Dr. Price found were essential in developing a healthy diet. So, some of the main factors where we got it weren't actually dairy. Now everything's vitamin fortified. Everything has vitamin D in it. If you really wanna get good vitamin D, you really should spend a little bit of time in the sun every day. That's the most natural way of going about it. You have to be careful with taking a lot of additional supplements as a lot of these vitamins are fat soluble, which means that you don't urinate them out or excrete them easily. So if you take too much, that can also be bad. It's really deficient in our foods now because of the soil and the way, especially here in the US, we treat our foods. So compared to 50 years ago, our food, this is so sad, has less than 10% of the vitamins and minerals that used to be present in our foods because our soil is so mistreated. And also a lot of things like wheat, we've now not only genetically modified, but we, we go through an intense process of bleaching it and milling it. And the way we, we refine our wheat is to enhance and bring out the most gluten, because we view that as the best for pro all of our processed foods, and also the best in taste. So you will not be getting any of, of these vitamins from the typical foods that we eat here in America, even if they say they're fortified with it. So if you really want to get down to it, the, the best things are in natural meats and natural oils. Now, organ meat, which is consumed in many other countries except ours, is a really good source of natural vitamin A and K2. We don't typically eat that here in the US because we do so much with our, especially our beef, where they're given so many hormones and so much grain that they're actually not suitable for eating. If you think back to the 1950s America, 
they were given supplements of castor oil and it was very common also for families to eat liver as their main course in dinner. We do not do that nowadays. It's, it's more taboo, not because of its taste, but because of what we do to our meat here. So the, the book goes into more options for finding naturally derived vitamin A and vitamin D, but that's really important in helping, even as an adult, rebuild the health of your mouth and shift it so your body is actually trying to protect itself against decay and some of this harmful bacteria. Really avoid sticky, sticky foods. And essentially that just means having a lot of processed foods completely eliminated from your diet. Anytime that something's in packaging or you get it from a drive through just think that that's really not to the standard of what we need in terms of not only nutrients, but the chewing that we need to help develop our jaws. Dr. Price found that a lot of these cultures, especially in caveman type skulls, had all this room for all of the teeth because they were literally chewing the tooth or the, the meat off the bone. So all of that chewing of the sinewy foods and then raw vegetables is, is really what helps develop the, the, the jaws. So in children, it's really important to give them things like crunchy foods, cruciferous vegetables, carrots, and meat that's on the bone that they can pull off and spend a lot more time chewing. The chewing action not only helps shape the jaws and the mouth in a positive way, but it also works the muscles in a positive way that really helps their jaws develop well for all the teeth to come in. And that's something that I think that everyone would benefit from, from knowing. So I encourage you, if you'd like to learn more, to, to read either of these books. I found them very informative. I refer to them all the time. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me when you're in for an exam. Mm -hmm.